Oh, man, what a week. Have you ever had one of those weeks? We had the flu at our house this week. It was a great week. Said no one ever, right? Oh, my gosh. It was, uh, it was one of those times, you know, where you pray uh, Jesus to heal you or kill you. You know, it's you know, one of those times it's, you know, you're just, it can go either way. Uh, it was just, ugh. Uh, so, uh, and my wife didn't get it. So, uh, you know whose prayer life's strong in our house, right? And so, there you go. Um, uh, me and poor Rue had it, and um, we, we were, uh, I'm not, I, I'm, I'm like most guys, you know? I'm a big baby when you get sick. Yeah. Can I get a witness? Yeah. yeah. I noticed all the women chimed in on that. All the guys are like, I ain't no baby, I'm I'm John Wayne. What you talking about? Yeah. Um, hey, if you've got your Bibles, uh, turn with us. We're going to be uh, in the Gospel of Mark. And I, I've just, this week, you know, being sick and everything, not able to put some of the time that I wanted to in it. But God has just, the last couple of days, just blessed this passage so much. And um, I'm just excited to preach it. And, and well, I guess more so teach it this morning. Uh, before we get too far down the road, though, how, how's everybody's prayer life been this week? Yeah, man, I mean, uh, for some of you guys that were here Sunday night, uh, I, I hope that God gave you a blessing out of that. Um, I, I just, uh, I just real felt, felt a real strong connection with that. If you, if you weren't able to make it here on Sunday night, uh, this past Sunday night, you know, we would urge you, or if you can't make it during, you know, during the week for services or something, go to our website, um, my WBCC, and, uh, and you can check out, you can archive sermons and go back and check out services and stuff like that. And it also keeps you up with a lot of the current events that's happening too. Because we know during this year, you know, a lot of people are traveling and stuff. So uh, that, 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 maybe that'll help you out, okay? Um, beginning a series this morning called Red Letter Living. And um, or red letter life, I like. I'm I'm good really with either one. And uh, the whole premise it, it falls in line with what we've been talking about up to this throughout the whole from the beginning of the year to now. And we're going to go into probably through Easter. And I don't know how long the Holy Spirit wants to take or how far God wants to take it, but it's all part of this idea of preaching on faith and 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 the the idea of practical faith. Uh, not just the theological belief of faith, not just um, a religious idea of faith, but practical, everyday type faith. You know, uh, the type of faith that you have to have just like you have to have a cup of coffee or a shower in the morning, whichever comes first for you, right? For most of us, it's coffee because you don't want to, you know, you can't even talk to anybody until you have some coffee in you, right? So it's that kind of practical, everyday faith and that's the kind of things we feel like God's got us on this year um, about learning about practical applicational faith okay and that's going to come to us through the four gospels it's going to come to us through Matthew it's going to come to us through Luke John and, uh, and and Mark where we're at this morning too but specifically one of the things we're going to start doing and 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 I, I want so I want to set it up a little bit and I want to I want to help lead you maybe this will help you in your um, in, in your daily devotional time, I want you to start looking because we're going to start this next week in Matthew chapter five, and we're going to start uh, over these next couple of weeks talking about the Sermon on the Mount, which um, is the greatest sermon ever preached. So it, it's almost almost have some trepidation about. Um, about teaching on it because how can you possibly teach on the greatest sermon ever preached but um, I think the idea is to try to pick things that Jesus wanted us and we're going to look at the Beatitudes specifically so I hope that that gives you some idea that you can start meditating over those things and asking the Lord to show you um, in these weeks to come and then when we come back together on Sunday what, what I'm really praying for and what I'm hoping will happen as God has spoke to your heart during the week that it's going to come together and it's going to be confirmation for you okay does that sound good you on board with it okay I guess. okay so Matthew chapter 2 uh, going to start off in verse 1 and read through. 
What did I say? What did I say? Mark. Just seeing if y'all were paying attention. Just uh, just uh, still some of this delirium. Okay. And again, he entered Capernaum after some days, and it was heard that he was in the house. Who was in the house? All right, let's try that again. Who's in the house? Whoop, whoop. In the house. Okay, all right. I heard that he was in the house. Immediately, many gathered together so that there was no longer room to receive them, not even near the door. And he preached the word to them. Uh, and then they came to him bringing a, a paralytic. Some of, you, some of your versions may have invalid. Um, basically, they brought to him somebody that was sick, somebody that was hurting, somebody that was uh, broken, somebody that was damaged. Um, who was carried by four men. I love the idea that Mark doesn't even mention these four men's name. I don't, I don't even know if he knew them. He probably didn't. But uh, I, I'm, I'll get to this in just a minute. There's a wonderful point in this, and we're going to come back to it, okay? Uh, and when they could not come near him because of the crowd, they uncovered the roof where he was. So when they had, so when they had broken through, never forget this, faith in Jesus always is a breakthrough. When you start exercising faith in Christ, you're setting yourself up for a breakthrough. Man, that should, I should have been shouted down right there. Right? When you put your faith in Jesus, you're setting yourself up for a breakthrough. Now, wherever you're at financially, wherever you're at spiritually, wherever you're at emotionally, when you start placing risky faith in Jesus, faith that's unbridled in Jesus, faith that thinks outside of the box for Jesus, you're setting yourself up for a breakthrough in Jesus. Amen? Amen? Don't, don't miss that because that's so crucial to what, you know, Mark's trying to get across to our story. It, it, we talk about practical everyday faith, but you have to understand that, that, that in this story too, God wants you to have a breakthrough. God wants you to have a breakthrough. And, and we're going to see in this story right here, as these men moved in faith, it moved God. Don't miss that. As they moved in faith towards Jesus, as they moved in faith with Jesus, then it, it pleased God enough that it moved God. So when Scripture tells us that without faith it is impossible to please God, faith, our faith, moves God. God loves to move in response to our faith towards him. Don't, oh, don't miss that. Because I think it's big for some people this morning, and I don't know where you're at with it, but what I feel like the Holy Spirit's telling you is this, is don't give up. Don't give up. Your breakthrough's right around the corner. And I'm not preaching feel-good gospel. I'm just telling you what I feel like the Holy Spirit's telling me this morning. You need to keep on keeping on. There's a breakthrough coming for you. You need to stay with what you're doing. You need to keep praying the way that you're praying. You don't need to give up. Don't be discouraged. Quit listening to the devil. Quit listening to the naysayers in your life. Continue with what you're continuing with. Pick up your Bible. Keep praying for that lost person. Keep praying for that financial situation. Keep reaching out to God. Keep doing the things God's telling you to do because there's a breakthrough coming for you. Keep on keeping on. Because you know why? Jesus is in the house. Woo, woo, woo. All right. I don't know who that was for. I think that was may just been for me. I mean, you know, I don't even know. I, just, I got something out of it. Okay. And when they could not come near him because of the crowd, they uncovered the roof where he was. So when they had broken through, they let down the bed on which the, the, the invalid was lying, where the paralytic was lying. When Jesus saw their faith, under, underline that sentence when Jesus saw their faith because faith must look like something to God 
Faith looks like something to God. Now, I know what we do is we talk about faith in this theological belief, and, this, and it almost seems like this it's, it's untangible type mystical even belief, you know, when we talk about faith, but what Jesus is saying here is, is that, and what Jesus is, is showing us here is this, that faith looks like something. And faith looks like something that God can see. So the question for me and you have got to be, the next question is this, what does faith look like then? Because if I, I want Jesus to see my faith, anybody with me? Yeah, so, so then what does faith look like? Because Jesus saw. He saw their faith. They just didn't believe he could do it. There was something that they did that was tangible that Jesus said, hmm, that's faith. Wow. Wow. So the question is, what does faith look like? We're going to answer that. He said to the paralytic, son, your sins are forgiven you. And some of the scribes were sitting there and they were reasoning within their hearts. What does this, why does this man speak blasphemies like this? Who can forgive sins but God alone? You know, you know when you think about it, that's not a bad question. I mean, we know who Jesus is. They didn't. They're still trying to figure it out. So, you know, when Jesus forgave them of their sins, you know, that's, that's something they're, they're trying to reason it through. And Jesus understands that. He understands doubt. He understands our heart. He understands questions in our lives. But immediately when Jesus perceived in his spirit that they reasoned thus within themselves, he said to them, why do you reason about these things in your hearts? Which is easier to say to the perilous check? Your sins are forgiven to you? Or to say, arise and take up your mat and walk? See, here's what I think we do sometimes. I know I did it when early on in my walk with Jesus. I, 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 the gospel was so easy, I had to make it hard. Anybody else ever done that? It's like, that's just way too easy, man. Don't even know my sins can just be forgiven. I mean, I got to do something else, right? I mean, this, something's not right here. You ever done that? And I think sometimes, sometimes I think I, it's never happened to me. It's probably happened to you. We're too smart for our own good. <laughs> right? And I, I have talked to people who, who literally have said it can't be that simple. And Jesus says it is. Faith is... Faith can be a simple thing. Which is easier to say to the paratic, your sins are forgiven to you, or to say, arise, take up your bed and walk. But that you may know that the Son of Man has power on earth to forgive sins. And he said to the paralytic, I say to you, arise, take up your bed, and go to your house. Immediately he arose, took up the bed, he went out into the presence of them all, so that all were amazed at glorifying God, saying, we have never seen, or we have never saw anything like this. I want you to think about something too. These four guys, their faith, their faith in Jesus created hope in others. Think about that for a minute. Your faith in Jesus, all right, if we get to the point to where a couple of things have to happen, our faith in Jesus, God will allow it to create hope in others too. And that's a great thing. Because when people start saying this, I have never seen nothing like this. Man, they're close to God. They are close to God. And there are people in our lives, every single one of us, we wished and we pray for every day for them that they would be closer to God. That, that their thought process would eventually say, I have never seen anything like this. I am amazed. This must be God at work, don't we? Yeah. Join me this morning as we talk about what does faith look like, okay? Father, in the name of Jesus, open up our hearts. 
hallowed be thy name. Father, be honored. May your name be lifted up and honored in this place. May it be revered. Father, may we say to ourselves, we have never seen anything like this before. Hallowed be thy name, Father. Thy kingdom come, thy will would be done. Father, may your will be done in our lives today. During this time, may your will be done, Father. Would your kingdom come into the lives, Father, of people that we love. Father, especially for these families in Florida that we pray for, that thy kingdom would come, that you would comfort them in a way that only you can comfort them, that you would comfort them in their grief and in their sorrow and in their loss. And Father, we pray for healing in this nation, that thy kingdom would come to this nation that thy will would be done, Father, on earth as it is in heaven. The perfect will of Christ, the perfect will of God. Lord, that you would give us today our daily bread. Feed us today, Father, from your word. Your word is life. Your word, Father, is the very bread of life. Nurture our souls, speak to our hearts, discern, Father, within us. If there be any sin within us, any evil way within us, Father, Father, I pray strengthen us all in the name of Christ Jesus and we ask these things in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit Amen Okay so th th this morning um, one of the things that, that this whole story looks at I, I, I love the idea that um, that Jesus saw their faith because it gives me a, a, a tangible something tangible that I can kind of grab a hold of. And, and the first thing that I think that faith looks like is this. Faith looks a lot like love. I want you to think about something. In Hebrew culture, okay, uh, invalids, uh, people that are sick, lame, poor, uh, they would usually... Um, they would usually sit outside, even to this day they do it, but most of the time in ancient times, in biblical times, they would sit outside the city gates. Now, I want you to think about something. When this whole house, you don't know how big the house was, we just know that it was a, it was a packed house, right? So, uh, poor people during that time would sit outside of places, prominent places, and they would beg, and that they would, and, and, and there's, it doesn't matter if you're Christian or if you're a Muslim now, uh, there, there are very clear instructions about how God intends us to, to treat the poor. Right? Right? So, I want you to think about something. How many people must have walked by this guy to get to Jesus? Now that should create in all of us a sense of pause. Because here's the thing, and, I, and we say this a lot when I talk about loving people, but you just can't say it enough because it really has to get, we really have to get this in our day and age when, when social media drops so much and when relationships, this kind of relationship are getting, are getting so distant in our lives. And we, we see the evidence of it every single day that if we're not careful, we can become indifferent to people. And, and one of the biggest, I don't know, one of the biggest things, the biggest thing Jesus says is if you're going to love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, body, mind, and soul, then you have to love others. Amen. Talking in tongues up in here, but it's going down. <laughs> but think about this now. Jesus says, there's, there's, he breaks the whole law down to two commandments. He says, love the Lord thy God. And then, and then the, the, the second I liken it to the first, that you are to love one another. Don't, don't miss this, because it's big. If, if, we start to become indifferent to people, we are becoming indifferent to God. I'm going to say it again. There is a danger. There is a danger that you see here in this story that if we start to become indifferent to people, 
You're in grave danger becoming indifferent to God. If Jesus, if what Jesus said is true, and we know what he said is true, and, and therein lies the, the, the thing. The, the, these four guys, I, I love the fact that they're not named. Because to me, these, these four guys are the first church. The first church, because the, the, the first church right here is, is you know, there, there's, there, 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 there are no names. They were just willing to do whatever it took to get somebody that was hurting to the feet of Jesus. And that's what the church ought to be about. Oh, come on, man. That's what the church ought to be about. The church ought to be about doing whatever we can do to get hurting, broken, damaged, sick people to the feet of Jesus Christ. And if we're not doing that, are we really the church? Because that's what this scripture tells us. that these four guys, They're not named. I, I love the anonymity in that. Their names are nobody, somebody, anybody and everybody right and their whole deal was we're going to do whatever it takes to get this particular guy to the feet of Jesus there there and that's a, it's this it's this radical faith this risky faith this crazy, out-of-the-box, creative thinking type faith that says, I'm going to do whatever I got to do to get them to Jesus. Paul says this to the church in Galatia. For in Christ Jesus, neither circumcision nor uncircumcision, meaning neither Jew or Gentile, meaning neither religious or non-religious, meaning uh, neither heathen or religion. It, do, it doesn't matter. He says it doesn't, so across the board, it doesn't matter who it is. It doesn't matter who you are. That avails nothing. But faith. But faith. But faith. Working through what? Why? Because faith looks a lot like loving one another. That's what Jesus saw. That's what Jesus saw. He, faith looks a lot like loving your brother and your sister. And it doesn't matter what they look like. It doesn't matter what their skin color is. It doesn't matter even what their religion is. It doesn't matter where they came from, whether the good side of the tracks or the bad side of the tracks. It doesn't matter whether they're beggars. It doesn't matter whether they're from Wall Street. It doesn't matter what matter. It doesn't matter if they're circumcised or uncircumcised. The only thing that matters, the only thing that will matter at the end of the day, the only thing that will matter at life, the only thing that will matter at eternity, they're eternal souls, and they're going to go somewhere. And here's the thing. The only thing that's going to matter in the end is did you produce faith out of love? For one another. Did we do it? Because that's what it, church, that's what's going to matter. Because Jesus says he saw their faith. And their faith looked a lot like love. Man. Ugh. Moving along. Faith looks a lot like work. This one right here, it's going to be like going to the doctor's office and getting a shot. When he says, it's going to hurt a little, but it's going to help more. Okay? It's going to sting a little, but it's going to help. I want you to think about something for a minute. These guys, we don't know where they came from. We don't know uh, what was going on. But we don't know if they walked a block with this guy or maybe a couple of doors down. We don't know if they walked a couple of miles away. We don't know if they were from another city. We don't know if they were from another state. We don't know how far they walked. But these guys picked up their friend on a mat, one grab in each corner, and they walked however far they walked. They got to the house. They realized that they couldn't get in. And one of them said, hmm, how about the roof? And then went, this is how guys think. That's a pretty good idea. 
That is a pretty good idea. You got some rope? I got some in the truck. Hang on a minute. I'll be right back. I got some in my donkey. Hang on. I'll be right back. Hey, you get that uh, car and bring over here. Do we need a level? Nah, wing, wing it, wing, wing it. Okay, all right, let's. He said, hey, well, that's a pretty thick roof. What do you want to do there? I got a hammer out in my other donkey. Let me go get the hammer, and we're going to pull this roof back. Get a crowbar, too. We're going to need one of those. Okay. And they, 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 and they dropped him. They, they got him there, and they, they tied the knots, and, and they started loading him down. Somebody probably said a prayer. Probably the guy on the mat. He was probably saying a prayer. I hope these clowns, you know, know how to tie knots, you know. It's probably something like, or we're going to have a, have a heck of a healing service by the time he hits the ground or whatever, you know, whatever it's going to be. So you, you lower him all down there. Without a level, because you didn't need one. No pulleys. Oof. Says that through the roof. That's a lot of work. You know, sometimes I'm amazed. And I'm not just saying this to you. I'm going to say it to me too. Sometimes I'm amazed at how hard I work at some things. But do I put that same kind of effort into my faith in Jesus? You know, some of us will work really hard at work and our jobs, and you should, you should. And some of us work really hard at our hobbies. And listen, I'm not begrudging you, hear me here. I love my hobbies too. And if you work hard, you should play hard, okay? Just hear me out. And we work so hard at keeping up on political events we work so hard at keeping up with this and with that. We work hard at Facebook. We work hard at Instagram. We work hard. I mean, we, we, we put a lot of time and we put a lot of effort and we put a lot of resources into a lot of things and we work hard at them, don't we? Do we work just as hard at our faith? Because, you know, and here's, here's what I'll say, I, and I have been so proud this week when, when, when we were out of, out of commission at our house because of our little woman, because of me. It, it, it warmed my heart so much to hear that, that there were people that were meeting here that were, they, they were, they were looking to volunteer for, for children's ministry and for youth ministry, and, and they, were, they were filling in gaps, and we, they were volunteering, and people were doing the work that needed to get done, all for the kingdom, working at their faith. And here's my thing. Is there something in your life that requires you to work at your faith? Because, listen, as you serve... And that's what these guys were doing. As you serve others, God uses it to stretch our faith. And if you're not serving, you're probably not getting stretched a lot. But don't miss this, okay? Your faith and my faith, they're, they're personal things, right? I mean, it's, it's between you and God. But your faith has to get to a point, and God wants it to get to a point where your faith goes beyond just you and God and goes, and goes beyond to others. Where your faith in Jesus impacts your life so much that it starts to impact others through your service. Amen. A little one got it back there. You see what, but you hear it? It's got to... Still small voice, right? Okay. But, uh, and, and, uh, the whole idea is that, yeah, we, we do want our faith to grow personally. We always want, you always want to be growing personally in your faith, but your faith has to get to a point where it moves beyond you and where it starts to impact others. That's, that's one of the lessons of this story. If these guys, if their faith had just been about them, they'd have just walked by the guy and went, I hope you get well, dude. Peace out, man. Right? And that's... And I have people tell me this all the time. 
well, yeah, pastor, I would volunteer at children, but have you ever seen three-year-olds? They're scary. They're scary. They're scary. I tell they come at you sometime. But they'll say stuff, you know, hey, I already raised my kids. Really? I don't have time. Really? You don't have time to give an hour of your time? Because, you know, there's an old saying that says, it takes a village to raise a child. Well, it takes a Christian village to raise Christian children. If it hadn't been more clear than that to you this week by watching the news, that what happened in Florida. I don't know how you go get it. I just wonder how much that child's life would have changed if somebody would have sowed into his life. I just wonder, and I have to question myself, have I done enough on my part? Because I'm not just preaching to you, I'm preaching to me. And this guy could have just damaged, hurt, broken, could have slipped through the cracks too. But this story tells us that faith looks a lot like love. And it looks a lot like work. How you doing at it? Here's what James says about it. Okay? What does it profit, brothers, sisters? What does it profit us? If someone says he has faith, but he doesn't have any works that go along with it. I go to church every Sunday. Good. Good. I give to charity. Good. Good. I read my Bible every day. Awesome. Awesome. I pray. I even pray for you, Pastor. Well, that's a job. <laughs> thank you. My wife says amen and thank you. Where does your faith, though, okay? Where's the evidence of it in Jesus? That's what that passage is saying. Because if there's an evidence of God, then there has to be works that come with it. Now, works won't save you. You don't work because you want to be saved. Salvation, Jesus tells us, comes clearly. It's not through anything we do. It's through everything that he's done. But our works, our evidence of our faith should be seen. That's why Jesus says this. He says, you, know, you will know them by the fruit that they bear. Right? You know them by their fruit. Fruit of what? Fruit of faith. Why? Because faith looks a lot like work. Okay. Last one is this. Faith looks like determination. I run to the next one, too. Do I have an element up there, too? Yeah. For whatever is born of God overcomes the world. I love this passage of scripture. For whatever is born of God overcomes the world. Uh, I can preach a whole sermon on that. And this is the victory that has overcome the world. What is it? Our faith. Faith is that ironclad quality that says this. It sees through circumstances. And it says, I'm not done yet. It says, it may look like I failed, but it's just because I'm not quite done yet. Right? I mean, just think about this for a minute. Those guys get to the house, and they get up, they get to the house, and they've all been carrying, they're all sweating, you know, and they're huffing and puffing, and they get up to the house, and they, they see that you can't get in because the door's packed. People are coming out the doors. People are climbing out the windows. You know, everybody, you can't even see anything. And then all of a sudden, they, they say to themselves, well, you know, we tried. It must be God's will. And they all just head back to the house. No. Faith is that quality, that ironclad quality that says this. I'm going to push through. This will be done in Jesus' name. Faith looks a lot like determination. 
And I said it before, and, 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 I, and I got ahead of myself, but I just don't want you to hear, don't give up because faith is a breakthrough for some of you. Faith is going to be a breakthrough. Be determined to see it through. Um, and this is something that you need to hear. Many times, especially when you're first starting to walk with Jesus, okay? When, when you're first starting to walk with Jesus, uh, you, you, you're coming in and things are going great. And you're like, woohoo, yeah, man, Jesus, yeah, I'm going to go, man. This is awesome. And the first thing you run into when you hear a sermon like this or after you come to know Jesus is you run into an obstacle. You run into a storm. You run into something that comes contradictory to the word. You run into a problem. The house was packed. We couldn't get in. Here's the thing. Don't miss it. God allows it. God allows it. Some of the problems some of y'all are going through right now, it ain't the devil. It's God. And people are like, what? What do you mean? That, that will disturb some people's theology to think that God is the author of some of your problems. Right? Have you ever thought about that? Why would God do that? So that you can exercise faith and see it through. So that faith becomes a very real, tangible thing into your life. To where when, when all said and done, all you've got to do is to hang on to Jesus. Let's just get him through the roof. It doesn't matter how we do it. Let's just do it. To get to you to where, listen, you sometimes... You know, you know that saying, we say this, and we butcher it all the time in church. Man, we butcher it. Well, God never give you more than you can handle. That's bull. God gives you more than you can handle all the time. Trust me, I know. Ask my wife. She's married to me. So you'll get more than you can handle. Trust me. Right? Why? So that. God can get you to a point where the only thing left to hang on to, the answer to your problem, the solution to your headache is Jesus. To where when everything else is stripped away, at the end of the day, you just have to get to the feet of Jesus. And you know it. And you know it. Last one is this. Faith looks risky. And faith looks radical. You know, I love this part of the story. Can, I mean, can you just imagine what some of the other people were thinking when these guys started climbing the roof with this guy? I mean, this invalid, I mean, he's on a mat, you know, the guy can't move. And they're like, let's take him to the roof. And they're like, what? I'm sure there was somebody there who yelled, you can't take him to the roof, man. That's an OSHA violation. You can't, he needs, y'all need some hard hats on and some scaffolding. And what are you doing? You can't be doing, don't be taking him up on the rooftop. Or, you know, or there were maybe some of the religious people that said, well, hold on now, brothers. Hold on, dear brethren. Let's form a committee. Let's have a potluck dinner. We'll make a couple of decisions. And maybe in the near future, we can get that brother on the rooftop. <laughs> Hallelujah, somebody passed me a biscuit. <laughs> you know, sometimes faith is risky. And I think when Jesus saw their faith, he said, I love those dudes, man. Those guys are crazy, crazy cool. And they're willing to do whatever it takes to get their friend to the feet of Jesus. I want to tell you something. You're never going to change your world. Never. If you're not willing to do something you've never done before. And the disciples, the disciples changed the world 
with the gospel of Jesus Christ because they were willing to take radical, risky approaches that nobody else wanted to take. And if you want our community and this church, and if we want to see people brought to the feet of Jesus, we got to start getting risky and we got to start getting radical to get people to where they need to be, and that's at the feet of Jesus. Amen? Amen. And church, listen, I'll do anything short of sinning to get somebody to the feet of Jesus. And that's what these boys were like too, and I love it. I love it. I've run out of time again. Let me. Re- now nah, I don't know what was that. Guys, God's got you somewhere right now, where He wants you to take a leap of faith with Him. He wants to see your faith. Now, where is that place? Whatever just flashed in your mind is it. That's the Holy Spirit telling you. For some of you, you know, for some of you, it's braving the waters and going in with the three-year-olds. For others, it's the youth. For some of you, it's having an uncomfortable conversation with a coworker about Jesus. For some of you, it's God's been leading you to take a different career path. For others, it's, it's, it's God wanting you to have a conversation with your spouse and tell them you're sorry. You've made a mistake. And to heal and to reconcile a marriage or to heal and reconcile a friendship. Because that's what faith, stepping out, that, 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 that look of love and that look of work and that look of determination and that look of risk is going to look like for you. And for some others, for you, listen, your, your step of faith is to start tithing. Because it, it's, for, for you, it's been something like, I can't make this happen. The bills, the numbers just won't work and, 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 I, and I, just, I just can't do it. And you, you're going to have to take a risky and a radical approach and throw it into Jesus' hands and say, Lord, here it is at your feet. Man, I'll never forget. And it was brought up to me this past week. October will be 20 years since I walked into a soup kitchen in High Point, North Carolina strung out golly I was strung out and I didn't know what to do I didn't know where to go and faith to me looked so risky when your life is hanging in the balance and going through last week with Caleb's stuff God reminded me you know we talked about it on Sunday night about how David would remind himself about the good things God had done in his life and God took me back to that remember where you were 20 years ago remember the mess you were and faith man it looks so risky it looks so radical how in the world could I possibly become a Jesus freak I mean, I'm a deadhead, man, you know? I'm an old hippie. I'm an old rocker. And then God said, and then you want to do something really cool? I'm going to make you a preacher. (laughs) That'll really mess with their minds. But that's what kind of God I am. I'm a loving, determined, risky, and radical enough God to believe in you. And the very faith I want you to exhibit comes from me. And it's because I'm loving. And it's because I'm radical. And it's because I'm determined. 
And it's because I'm not afraid of the work that's ahead of me and you. And I don't want you to be either because I promise you I'll never leave you and I'll never forsake you. And I'm gonna make something wonderful out of this. Take up your mat and arise. Your sins are forgiven. Your sins are forgiven. And that's what faith looks like because it comes from a God who that's what he looks like. Join me as we go to the Lord in prayer. Gracious Heavenly Father, thank you for being the author and the perfecter of our faith. You continue to amaze. You continue to do wonderful things. Father, challenge us, I pray. Don't leave us alone with this. Just continue to stir in our hearts, Lord, and create this faith in our lives, Lord, this faith that will overcome, this faith that will be determined, this faith that is full of love that we can see, Father, in our lives, that, that it overcomes the world that we are in, Lord. May we, may we operate, Father, not seeing people in any other way but your creation, that we may love one another, that we may be diligent, Father, in our faith toward Jesus. Father, in the name of Christ, in the name of Jesus, we pray.